Welcome back to The Bible is Art, where we explore the literary artistry of the Bible. And in this week, we are going to look at the first words of the first character in the Bible. So this week, we're looking at day one of the creation week, where we hear the first words and we see the first action of this main character, God. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I thought God's first action was creation, like in the first sentence. And that's half true. And it's half true because in Hebrew, there's a way to conjugate verbs, and this is a very common practice. There's a way to conjugate verbs that indicates whether the action is on the main line of the story or is background information. And the way the verbs are conjugated in the first two verses in the Bible indicates that they are background information. They are setting up the scene for the main focus of the first episode in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. And the main action is the six days of creation and then the seventh day of rest. And we know that because of the conjugation of the verbs, but also just how many words our author allots to it. We get just a few words in the first couple of verses, and then we get many hundreds of words in the remaining days. And as we've seen before, the first words and the first actions of a character in the Bible are very important. This is one of the characteristic features of the authors in the Bible, their means of characterization. And they're important because one, they tell us something central about the character, and two, they will come up in interesting ways in the plot. So let's see how this works with our character, God. And here is what it says. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. So we're going to do two things. First, we're just going to notice some things about our text. We're going to see some of the particularities about how our author has written this first day. And then we're going to see how does this characterize God and how does it work its way out in the rest of the stories in Genesis. So first, let's just notice some things. And the first thing I want you to notice is that this action is not simply creating light when nothing else is around. It's not just creating light when there's no earth or no universe or anything. No, 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 no. Notice, God is situated in the darkness, and it's from there that he creates light. Remember the first two verses? In the beginning, I created the heavens, the earth, the earth was without form of void. Darkness was over the face of the deep, but the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So God's spirit is situated in the darkness, and then he speaks light. So God speaks light in darkness. That's the first thing. Well, so what does this do? What does it do to bring light? Well, when you bring light in darkness, you uncover things that were previously hidden. You make things that were secret public. You show things that you couldn't see before. That's what God is doing. And then it says that he separates light from dark, and he gives them a period, a section in this day. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on in the text, but how does this characterize our character? Because as we talked about before, Genesis 1 is not just giving us information about the world. It's certainly doing that, but it's doing it mu much more. It's, it's characterizing, giving us a character profile of the main character of this story. So I want to look at how this light 
in darkness thing gets worked out in the rest of the stories because it is fascinating. And it is here that we get the beginning of one of the most productive and profound images in all of literature, light and darkness. And it's fascinating if you follow this image throughout the rest of the Bible, the metaphorical uses it has. And there's two main ones. That is, it is a metaphor for a moral property as well as an intellectual property. That is, light is a symbol for goodness and darkness for evil. And the intellectual property is that light is also a symbol for knowledge and darkness for its opposite, ignorance or deceit. And I want to show you the fascinating ways these interplay in two stories later in Genesis. The first one is in the Abraham story, and we're going to look in chapter 15 and just about the middle of the Abraham story where God makes a covenant with Moses. But let's review where Moses has been up till this time. So God calls Moses out of his homeland to leave it and leave his family and go to a land that God's going to give him. So he comes to this land and almost immediately problems start arising. So he goes into the land and there's a famine in the land. And so he has to go down into Egypt. And while he's in Egypt, the Pharaoh attacks his wife and God has to plague Pharaoh in order to give him his wife back. And so they go back to the land. And when they get back into the land, his servants, uh, Abraham's servants and Lot's servants cannot get along. So there's this family strife and they have to break up their family. And it gets worse because Lot chooses to go to a notoriously evil place, Sodom, which will have repercussions later. And then in the next scene, Lot gets kidnapped. And Abraham has to go with some fighting men and recover Lot from being kidnapped. So this is what's happened so far. God says to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to give you this land. Okay, this is great news, but what happens? Famine, wife attacked, family strife and division, and kidnapping. And that's the background to our story in Genesis 15. And Genesis 15 is organized really fascinatingly because it's it's organized into three scenes. And it starts in the day. And then in the next scene, the sun is going down. And then in the last scene, it is night. So we're moving to darkness. And I think that this is because this is an image of where Abraham is right now. And God had told Abraham to cut up these animals. And so he cuts them up. And then in this third scene, he goes to sleep. And it is dark and God shows up. And God shows up uh, in, in the form of fire. And he walks between these animals. And it's the first time in the Abraham story that he uses that great word covenant and says that he will make a covenant. He's promised him the land, but now he binds himself to this, even with this oath that says, may I be like these animals that I am walking through if I don't fulfill my promise to you. So notice, it is in the darkness that God comes as light to Abraham and he enlightens his situation by bringing this covenant, right? So the light is, 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 is pictured in this covenant that he makes. It's beautiful. And the second story, the second story is the Jacob story. So if you remember, there's two brothers, Jacob and Esau, and their father, Isaac, who is blind. Isaac is going to bless 
Esau. And so he tells Esau, go make me the food that I like. Come back and I will bless you. Well, Jacob wants the blessing from Esau. And so he dresses up like his brother and goes to his father and gets this blessing from him. But Isaac, who is blind, that is in darkness, says, you feel like Esau, but you sound like Jacob. Who are you? And in the moment of deceit, Jacob says, Esau. So what does Jacob do? He takes a man who is already in darkness and he brings further darkness, deceit. Well, Esau comes back, finds out what happens, and he, he wants to kill Jacob. So Jacob has to flee and he goes and lives with his uncle Laban. And while he's out there, one of Laban's daughters, he wants to marry. And Laban has another daughter. Jacob does not want to marry her, but Laban wants to marry her off first. So in the darkness of the wedding bedroom, he switches his daughters. And so Jacob marries, consummates the marriage with the other daughter. So notice. Jacob deceived his father in darkness, and now Jacob is deceived in darkness. Okay, but the characterization of God was that he brings light in darkness. So where's the light? Here is the extraordinary artistry. A few chapters later, God in the manifestation of a man comes at night and wrestles with Jacob. And he wrestles with him until morning. And Jacob wants this man to bless him. And so he says, bless me. And the man says, what is your name. That is, God comes in this darkness of his deceit and he is going to reverse because God's not just concerned about the retribution of Jacob's deed. Well, he is and he, he brought it back on his head with Laban, but also renovation. And Jacob says his name, Jacob. And that's right before the sun comes up. And at that moment, he is transformed. He is brought to light as the sun itself is coming up. From Genesis 1, in the first action, in the first words, we get a vision into this character's identity about what he does and how he works. And time and time again in later stories in Genesis, you're going to see both the physical image of light and its metaphorical uses of moral light and intellectual light being played in fascinating ways. Thanks for checking it out this week. And next week, we are going to look at the organization of Genesis chapter one.